They're ready for the game, Arashi. I mean, they must be. We are ready for the game as well. And just like that, Mirko, it's time. The last chance begins now. Let's see if the Philippines can do it to put themselves on the board. It's Indonesia's Taz on the orange buff. Philippines Del Rosario starting on the purple. Two petrifies available for Indonesia to make plays around. And for the Philippines, it's all flickers and it's still the purify in the hands of Imam. But wait a minute, that's aggression in the early game. Petrify being popped in defensively by Dreams. The Luna will take a bit of damage as well. But it's Philippines with again that early aggression. They went for the early aggression, but with the Thalassophobia, the blessing of the ocean, Dreams is just so much harder to pick off, and this is what they're trying to abuse right here. If the Filipinos want to go for those pickoffs early on, it's going to be very, very difficult because all the targets are either tanky, mobile, sustainable, or like Taz right here, he has crowd control immunity. Looking at it right now, man, Imam went for the Purify. He can actually get out of these crazy engages from Indonesia, especially from those Petrifies. But with the, when it's comboed together, they can actually just use it in a way where that Purify becomes kind of, you know, useless, right? It's gonna Rush. be a lot more difficult. I mean, for Indonesia, they have the option of just going on to Villa Luna as well. And just like that, if you are on a Kaja and you cannot get those pickoffs, your effectiveness, your usage is down so much. So right here, with the turtle spawning, aggression is being engaged by the Indonesians. And that Yeeve pick, man, it's a lot of damage and so much utility that is such a thorn in the side of the Philippines. For both teams, again, they are playing it passively. But honestly, if we're looking at it right now, if it goes, if the game is as slow tempo as it is in the first two minutes, it's definitely gonna favor Philippines later on in the game with a farce up. And that Leslie constantly scaling. Indonesia will find themselves outscale in the later stages. They're gonna have to look for more picks early on. They're gonna have to build a snowball here in the first few neutral objectives. If they don't snowball, it's gonna be very difficult for Brands to solo carry. Yes, Melissa has a lot of damage, and yes, he has the Inspire, but right now, Villa Luna gets jumped on. It's only the Roamer right now who's taking a whole lot of damage there. It's gonna be the pot up onto the back line. That's a Ooh. beautiful retribution by Taz to secure the first turtle of the game as Dream jumps in onto Imam, who's still able Ooh. to get out with the wings by wings. The pot up now with the help of Villa Luna against Psychos and Taz, who's able to withstand to sustain back up. Del Rosario gonna fall, and it's the first blood over to Taz. Look at Psychos just sustaining through all that damage, and you can see the benefit that aggression brings to you. Imam was unable to do anything because he was instantly jumped on by dreams. A roamer in his role, but still able to function like an assassin. Man, the smartest as well, Rashi. We've seen the smartest pick a whole lot. Meanwhile, top side, Psycho. Gonna be stunned up. He gets a little bit more HP. Doesn't get solo killed. Taz, though, right now, again, playing around that top side, providing a bit of support, Arashi. It's still 1-0. The turtle also going to the hands of Indonesia. So it's Indonesia with the initial lead. The Rosario with the shield unity and even the tortoise's puissance. It's actually committing all the dreams right now with Villa Luna coming in. That's the rough waves popped by dreams defensively just to get out of that situation. And it does seem like Indonesia has a lot more advantage, but this is how it's supposed to be. They have strong early game heroes and they need to abuse it because even though they are winning, the longer the game goes, the more difficult it's gonna be. Right now, the Filipinos go for a dive, but it gets countered. Real world manipulation, Imam, so, so low. Still, having that wings by wings, proper cover from the rest of the roster here for Team Philippines. Imam's gotta be careful. Needs to back off. Hijume and Dreams already maneuvering themselves to pick up, to give some more space over to Brands to pick up the shield Whoa. here. Imam gonna be taken low with the Fender Airstrike. That's a clutch movement by Imam. He gets out. He outplays the Indonesian members. Dreams here, gonna be able to get out, but what a play! Imam staying! Uh, outplay above outplays here. We saw that Brands goes in aggressively, trying to outplay the two low members from the side of the Philippines, but the Philippines read through it and counter it back. Right now, the Philippines have some more momentum to work with, and the turtle is up. Will they contest right here, knowing that as far as heroes goes in the early game, we are at a disadvantage, and it seems like Indonesia might just let it go. Better setup right now with a divine judgment as well, but bringing Taz out for the retribution to come through from Del Rosario to secure the second turtle of the game. The Philippines the who are able to withstand, and again, they're coming back, equalizing in gold.
They're equalizing in gold, but the Indonesians have taken a lot of HP and of course the gold shield from the bottom tower as well. That means brands who have a lot more damage and looking at the composition, there'll be some time here where the long range burst will not be able to just deny him completely. And in those mid game fights, that is where brands will attempt to use that lead to try and take over the game. We'll have to see again, right? The game is going very, very slow. Like we mentioned early on, Indonesia wants to get the ball rolling as fast as possible. In the later stages, they're gonna have to rely heavily on that Yeve and the Melissa. I think when it comes to this, this consistent damage, it might actually favor Philippines, but Villaluna now running away, Dreams going in, that's a Petrify as well, a lot of damage placed in, a lot of resources spent as well. He's even gonna be Dove on with Feather Airstrike and Dabdab, who jumps in with the Blinker, finding that kill. Brands now with the go away, still able to kind of ban, but the Padap comes in with that stun, picking up a double kill for Philippines. Even Soriano getting out, Taz now in the midst, still able to escape. It's a two for one in favor of Philippines. The Philippines definitely come out on top here, taking out the gold lane and the mid lane at the same time. They were just a bit too aggressive from Indonesia, and they get flanked out. And against Eboxia, if he is behind you guys, that's gonna be so difficult to deal with. And Soriano instantly equalized the power situation. Let's take a look at that replay. Instantly engaging onto Villa Luna, but as a result, Hejumi gets jumped on. He pops the real manipulation to try and buy a bit more time, but even Brands gets taken out right here. And you can see that in a messy fight, both teams can come out on top, but wait a minute, Brands is out of the game. Philippines, this is what they like to do. Again, playing around that gold lane. Dreams though, again, this is getting personal. Another engage onto Villaluna, who's able to soak in that damage. It's all to distract from the Eternals. Taz and Psychots are onto it. With a man advantage, Philippines will look to try to commit onto this. It's a contest right now with Zablav coming in. Psychots finds it, securing the turtle. Imam still able to get out with wings by wings. Psychots disengaging with the help of Dreams. Philippines not gonna go for it. As well as Indonesia, both teams, they just decide to back off and to rebuild. Indonesia is still ahead right here. They were able to steal that turtle as well. But as we mentioned, the clock is ticking and they keep trying to go for engages onto Villa Luna and it hasn't been really working out as intended. And the Filipinos are definitely still not as behind as the Indonesians would want them to be. Seven minutes in. Only a 1,000 gold lead here for Indonesia. Even less, actually. That's 700 around. Conceal playing, gonna be popped in now. Villa Luna looking for the play. Brands able to spot them out, canceling that conceal. As Taz disengages, Philippines are trying their best to again get some pressure back into the enemy jungle in that gold lane. They have an advantage when it comes to that pressure because of the tier one in that bottom side, but they have to be very careful around that top lane. Look at how Indonesia are playing around that. Right now, Imam does not have the lightning truncheon as well. So once that item is completed, that's a lot more wave clear, a lot more burst damage that the Filipinos can play with. Right here, Dreams is serving as an assassin, trying to make a play, most likely. But we'll have to see if the Filipinos fall for it. The neutral objectives are not up right here, so both teams they have time to try and make creative plays of their own. It's all about the setup again, right? Mid control, pushing into waves again, just building this little lead with manipulating the waves, by manipulating the waves, as they are also going to play around the vision. They're going to play around the bushes right now to look for these crazy ambushes. But honestly, if they play this way, Rashi, I do feel like, again, Indonesia might have a little bit of a lead when it comes down to the accident. Just that pickoff. There's a lot of map openers, though, for Philippines to get that vision down. Dream's gonna be zoned out. That's the Lord against spawning in. Whoa, the Bravest Fighter by Dipada. Over in that topside river. That's a, a massive resource burnt out before the Lord fight. The Filipinos are applying the Indonesian strategy of taking out your engage tool before you can engage on them. So Dreams is definitely one of the main heroes they are looking to pick off. But look at this play, though. The Filipinos already showing different looks, being a lot more aggressive. We saw that they usually kite back, but in the first few fights here, they're actually diving into the back line, ensuring that Hijumi and Brands get taken out, even if the frontliners are able to dive towards their own back line. Winning conditions but for both teams. For Philippines, they need to play these, this team fight with the pod up. Jumping into that back line again, he needs to be the distraction towards the Yeev, towards the Melissa. But for Indonesia, they need to just dive straight onto the Leslie and the Farsa. It becomes really, really interesting now in the mid-stage of the game with the Lord spawn in, as Indonesia will have more control here. 
Philippines looking to again still find this position. They're still trying to contest it, Arashi. And right now, even though Indonesia wants to go for pickoff, even though it, it, it seems like they know that they have a numbers advantage here, you can see that everyone's playing so patiently, trying to figure out if this is a trap, if there's any flanks coming through. And for Indonesia, it's a slow approach, but the Filipinos are rotating, and the Indonesian spot them. Black Dragon Form is being used. Black Dragon Form over there. Villaluna gonna be able to find it by Judge, but Taz is gonna be looking for it, but give it to Rosario, who finds the retribution. Now, Taz gonna be stunned up, gonna be decimated there by himself. Del Rosario canceling out the real world manipulation, and Philippines are back. They are here in the game, and they're looking to win it. That is a massive lord picked up by the Philippines. They're the ones who are able to just counter engage. And now with the lord just pushing and empowering the waves, the Indonesians are on the back foot. They do have long range damage, but they are not immune to the dive potential. And just like that, Federal Airstrike has been used, and it's being used so often and so aggressively by Imam. That Feather Airstrike again, such a problem for Indonesia to deal with right now. As with the Lord pushing in that bottom lane, they are gonna look for some sieges. Soriano already in that bottom lane with the support, with the vision provided by Depada and Villa Luna. They're looking to siege down some more, but it's again, just Indonesia who are choosing often to give this bottom lane tier two up for the Philippines. In the mid lane as well, they're looking for it right now. Del Rosario is able to find the shield unity. And the instant ball up coming in from Soriano and Imam to pick it up. Now it's the mid lane tier two. Philippines are doing super well in the siege. Every single turret falling now. As that's perfect setup again for the top lane tier two. The feather air strike taking away a whole lot of HP from Hijume. For now, Indonesia, they have an, a, a, a huge detriment. They are not able to get that engaged. In game number one, every time they, they figure out that the fight is on, they can just go and they can catch the members of the Ooh. Philippines, but it's a reverse this time. That's the Divine Judgment. Taz instantly burst it down. The real world inflation not finding the range, but Saika finds the Vector 5 onto three. It's a one for one now. Indonesia able to find one more range. Jumps in, almost finding more, but it's a beautiful disengage from Philippines. A beautiful read by the members both using the flicker and the purify that was such a tense situation for the philippines that could have been disaster they were clumped up together to avoid getting picked off but against a kadira against a yu tong you need to have proper spacing right here three men petrify from wow. Psychos was able to start it off for indonesia and the follow-up from dreams nearly sealed the deal Fortunately for the Philippines though, they're able to escape with their lives and now it's back to that slow paced gameplay. Who will make the first move? Solid reaction time for both Soriano and Imam. The positioning as well was absolutely perfect. And now Rashi, we're creeping into that late game with the items here. Oh, it's a beautiful in-game fight to pot up over towards Dreams. Psychos looking for some more. Doesn't have to petrify. Soriano still able to kite away with the help of Imam. Psychos jumping in. Gonna be pushed back. Del Rosario taken down. Soriano finding the kill. It's a two for one again in favor of Philippines. Dreams tries his best to be that obnoxious roamer, finding intelligence and still surviving. But the Filipinos understand that he has limited mobility. Every time his his, his movement abilities have been used up. They just jump on him and they completely punish Dreams and shut him down. Right here, 0 and 2 is not the score he needs to be to be able to one-shot, to be the threat for the back line. That's the downside of not having a flicker. That's the downside of going for something like a Petrify. You're technically a glass cannon. You cannot take those crazy engages that the Philippines have been able to force. But now, Whoa. again, it's been the real world replacing the Bada again on the back line, jumping in, doing so much to Bada, finding it, and the retribution goes towards the mid laner for Indonesia. Soriano on the back line, still able to dish out so much damage, picking up an unstoppable, and it's a three for one. The Philippines here are absolutely styling, but the Lord was given over to Indonesia with only dreams and psychos left to defend. It seems Philippines want to look for the end. 15 seconds for Brands to respawn right here. The Filipinos, they might just go for the 4v2 team fight. Psychot goes in with the Black Dragon form just to delay. The Petrify is available, but it doesn't seem like he will commit on a play like this. Furious dive defensively. Dream's gonna be stunned up by the shield unity. Soriano deals so much damage. That's a snipe. Dream's taken down. A monster kill for Soriano. 
Meanwhile, in the top lane, it's the Enhanced Lord marching down with Imam, forcing that Feather Airstrike to clear it out. Whoa. It's Philippines again, only able to find that base turn in the mid lane. That's a pure dive again onto the Luna, knocking two members up. So Rihanna in the back lines, but it's getting Brad massive with the go away, dealing out a whole lot of damage as the pot up soaks in so much in the front line. So Rihanna still in the midst, again, doing the true damage on towards the Indonesian members. The pot up running back, taking low, flickers Ooh. out, gets back to safety. A one for one in the end. A very good try by the Indonesians, trying to make sure that with the Lord pressuring the Filipinos, they delay the recalls and go for a fight when the Filipinos are disoriented. It all began here when Villa Luna is in the front. They go with the Furious Dive from Psychots, and Brands was positioning so, so well, but the pad up does so much damage. He is an absolute menace towards that back line. Taz tries his best, but at this point, the Martis is just a damage sponge for Soriano. That true damage is so dangerous and so difficult to deal with. Well, we'll see right now. They're gonna be spotted again. That's why Leslie becomes so prior right now. But you can already see with the real world when Galatian popped in. That's gonna be Dreams looking for the back line. Imam with a beautiful dodge and a purify to get out. It's just the mid lane tier one taken down. Del Rosario with the shield unity as well as the Tortoise's Poissons. He's looking for an engage, but it will not happen for Philippines as Indonesia read it out. They back off and it's back to that slow tempo setup game, that macro level gameplay again as we take a look at the items. Imam has the Holy Crystal on top of the Lightning Truncheon Clock of Destiny combo and with a Winter Truncheon, that is just double security because of course Imam understands he is an important tool for the Philippines right now and for Dreams, having the Genius Wand and the Divine Glaive, he now starts to do a lot more damage than the Philippines can afford to take. If the fight actually goes in favor of the Indonesians, that is definitely one of the core factors as right now, the Lord will spawn while Imam does not have a Purify. So that is a, a factor that the Indonesians can count on if they want to engage because both Petrifies from Indonesia are still available. Nine seconds for the Enhanced Lord. Still, it's an Enhanced Lord. Not yet that Evolved Lord. It spawns in in the 18th minute of the game. But I do feel like it's gonna be both teams looking for that Evolved Lord. Both teams will just try to dance around the Lord, play with the waves in the side lanes, and again, just force a mistake from one another. Right now, it does feel like Philippines have more control over the Lord Pit with the pot up on that top lane. This time, he's playing very carefully, Arashi, because of what happened last game. But now, getting the Black Dragon form, actually from Psychos, Conceal, and finds Doriano with the help of Dreams. That's a shutdown picked up with Luna falling to the hands of Hijume as that for the airstrike responded towards the real world inflation. Mini waves pushing in that mid lane. Del Rosario gonna look for an opening right now as that's Philippines looking for something in this fight. What can they do, Rashi? They can go for the lore seal if they really want to. It's gonna be forced to be a 50-50 though. No petrifies available for the Indonesians, but the Filipinos, it seems like they do not want to risk it. They know that they have options to play around with, so they concede this lord for now. It's a free lord given over to Indonesia. Still an enhanced lord. I think it was a wise decision by Philippines to look just to recall, to back off, to not commit, and to play around that Leslie and the Farsa now as we have entered that late stage. We have entered that late stage and now Indonesia with the Lord in town. They can go for a dive for aggressive maneuvers while the Philippines are forced to adjust and adapt to the fact that the waves are going to be pushing. Indonesia is going for those pickoffs though, waiting for flanks available. And if, it, if the Filipinos misstep here, it could be dangerous. No room for mistakes. Taz jumping in, bringing Del Rosario back. But Villaluna Luna finds the divine judgment on towards Psychop. Who's able to find a match fly out to three? It's Tom Odin. Soriano finds the kill. Taz gonna go massive on the back line as the pot up does the same. With a wave of fighter on the three. He does so much. He turns the tide. Imam getting out, getting a petrified. A beautiful winning Russian. The pot up versus the world in the back line. It's gonna be Imam falling. Del Rosario trying to save the game with the pot up as well. They're looking for it. The oh. pot up jumps in. Tom Gonna be able to dish out some damage as Brands goes into the mid lane, clearing the base turret up. The bottom of the Bravest Fighter again, saving the game for Philippines and taking Taz down for a double kill. All ends up in a 3 4 3 for both these teams, but the Indonesians have taken all the base turrets from the Filipinos and it looks like they have the advantage here. Death timers though, 
37 seconds on Taz, 25 seconds on Hijume right now. The Filipinos have a window where they have more members, but just take a look at that previous fight. Look at the engage. It just starts everything up for the Indonesians. And there's just not enough damage coming in from the Filipinos. They were not set up for this fight. And of course, Dreams comes in from the side. And it was sketchy. Everyone was so, so low. But fortunately for both these teams, two or three members were still able to survive. Hijumi now picks up that brute force breastplate as well. So it's going to be a lot more tanky uh, against the pad up as well as Soriano. But the purple buff has been stolen by the members of the Philippines. But now with the wave advantage, with the base turrets gone, the Indonesians have a lot more macro options to explore. The pot up is making miracles happen. Viluna to be caught That's the rough waves with the real world manipulation. The queen has fallen in the 20th minute of the game. Philippines down 4v5. This is the moment again for Indonesia to look for either a siege or to play around that evolved Lord with Villaluna spawning back in 26 seconds. There's a massive wave in the bottom side, but the Indonesians opt to go for control for setup in the Lord pit. The Filipinos are looking for an opportunity, but with 15 seconds to go until their main engage tool, their main takeoff person is actually on the map, it's gonna be very dangerous. The pad up though has the blade of despair, so now the backline needs to be very, very careful. And it seems like the Filipinos are not going down without a fight. Del Rosario opening up the sky, the fight, the bottom up jumps in towards Brass, fights the kill with Del Rosario. The Dreams. back line gonna be taken down, but Dreams finds the same on the Soriano. The bottom up is massive, jumps in, picks up a legendary. It's a one for two. Divine Judgment over to Psychos right now. The bottom up is gonna be able to flick her out. Psychos jumping with Dreams. Now, the bottom up in the midst of it all, gonna be taken down with a decimation. Imam still clearing out the waves, and it feels like Indonesia will still have more pressure to play with around the Lord. Villa Luna looking to play right now, jumping in again. Going to be knocked up. The Lord completely ignored by Indonesia. Here is died by Psychos. The Retribution battle, Del Rosario coming in. Villa Luna with the steal. Still, Philippines are in this game. They secured the Lord with a steal. Villa Luna saving the game from the brink of defeat. And the Indonesians are once again forced to wait and play around this Lord. The miracles happening for Philippines. A member down, two members down. The queen is still able to save the Philippines with the evolved Lord take. And now it's Soriano with the pot up spawning in. They might actually be able to capitalize on the fact. There's still five members available for the Indonesians though. So the Filipinos need to be very, very careful on how they want to approach this. Dreams already waiting for an opportunity, but look at this kite back. Look at this chase! Immortality gonna be popped in. That's Psychos again, looking for the back line. Soriano gonna be petrified, still able to run away right now, but it's gonna be Soriano who's gonna take him down. Dreams picking up an unstoppable. Del Rosario going back again to save his back line, but Dreams will not fall. It's a 2 0. Indonesia now looking for the end. 48 seconds for Soriano to spawn. This is a disaster, but the Filipinos have shown that they can wither this kind of storm. Indonesia making a play with the mid-wave, looking for an opportunity right here. Can the Filipinos clear it out? Imam's running back in for the airstrike to clear up the waves. Oh, Joe Rosario so getting in! Dreams jumping into the back line. Imam's still gonna be able to dish it out right now. The base is wide open, but there are no minion waves to play with for Indonesia, as Philippines have once again defended! They are able to clear the wave and Imam was able to survive from the dive of dreams. And instead, the Indonesians are now down their roamer for 48 seconds. That is not how they wanted this game to go. In 76 seconds, the next Lord, yet again, will be contested. And we have a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Bali, Indonesia, they're all up on their feet. This is a game to watch. My goodness, Arashi, let's slow the tempo down. Let's talk about the items, man. At this point, everyone has items, but the pad up knows that he is, right at this point, a damage dealer. They do not need to withstand damage. They need to make sure that Dreams, that Brands, the main damage dealers from the side of the Indonesians get shut down. But look at this. Oh, Psychos gonna get caught there. His the immortality is gonna be down. Dreams is still dead. 60 seconds on the death timers. 24 minutes in. What do Philippines do? They have a chance to go for the end right here. The waves are not pushing in because the base turrets are still available. But if Villa Luna can get a huge pickoff, there is potential. And it seems like the Filipinos recognize it. They're going for it. We have to be careful about Dreams trying to go for the back door, the flank. 
So much poke being dished out. Hijime taking a half HP with Brands and Taz. Philippines, again, waiting for the next mini wave, but it will not be coming in fast. It's still on the base, marching, walking down. Del Rosario in the front still. They're all protecting the back line. Soriano and Imam, these are the two winning conditions, but they bought enough time. They've cleared enough waves to look for the Lord now, and that's what they're going to do, rotating over towards that bottom side river. On the top side, though, the wave is pushing in favor of the Indonesians. So if the Indonesians want to play the long game, they have an advantage, and the Filipinos will be the ones forced to make a move. But look at this maneuver here. The Indonesians are splitting apart. How do they deal with this right now? The pot up sent to the base again to clear out the waves. Taz still playing around the lower. Del Rosario jumping with the shield unity. And it seems like Philippines are looking towards that topside river with Imam opening it up. They've spotted dreams and brands and they have stopped that split push threat from happening. And they are now clearing the wave in the middle side as well. And it's down to that Lord Dance. And in this situation, it does seem like the proactive maneuvers are available for the Indonesians. Can they dive towards the back line? Will the back line, Soriano and Imam, be able to survive from the aggression because if they do, that is a huge problem for the Indonesians, but that is a massive if. Even with Flicker, even with Purify, they sometimes still struggle because of the sheer amount of CC and the sheer amount of dive from Indonesia. We'll see how they try to face off against Indonesia here. It's a brilliant feather airstrike by Imam, taking a whole lot of HP from Hijume. And that might just be the little victory that Philippines need to, again, take control of that mid lane to have more pressure around the bottom side Lord Pit. That is the advantage the Filipinos have. Burst damage, but they might have spotted a Minijin member in the top side here. They make a play for it, and it won't be enough. The Indonesians are still on the board, still waiting for a chance to make a play. But this is macro territory, and the Indonesians, the top wave is just pushing again and again in their favor, making it such a headache for the Filipinos. This is the advantage you have when you get that base turret in that top lane. Those side lanes are constantly pushing in. Psychos now, look at the opening right now with the Helmetaz. Gonna be helped with the Divine Judgment. Del Rosario secures the ball lord. Soriano's able to kite back. Flickers out! Dreams and Psychos baited! And that was the pot up who jumps in. Villa Luna soaking a whole lot of damage right now. Soriano backs away. Villa Luna losing the immortality as he's gonna be Dovon. He's gonna be taken down. The Evolved Lord traded in for the Roamer. The Evolved Lord in favor of the Philippines, but 55 seconds on their main utility tool, their main catch opportunity. We saw this in the previous Lord take. Will the Indonesians still be able to outmaneuver, outplay the Filipinos somehow? Imam goes for the Shadow Palace, man. He needs a cooldown. The pot up again, zoning the other members away, Whoa. going in for that, but keeping knocked up. Now it's the real world manipulation by Hijume. Going into the back line, Soriano losing immortality, gonna be taken down as well by Dreams. Imam now gonna be targeted by Psychos who jumps in with the Furious Dive, who jumps in with the damage. Imam with the Feather Air Strike, losing the immortality. Del Rosario needs to help him out, but he can't do it. The winner, Truncheon, was baited out. Indonesia with a four man advantage. There was there was alone right here. There is one minion he can clear, but the next wave is coming out, Miracle. It seems like it is the end. On this day, a revolution begun. The monarchs have fallen, and Indonesia have won your ISF 2022 MLBB World Champions are Indonesia. And the crowd explodes. This is a great moment for Indonesia. What a performance, shutting down the dominant team in the Philippines. Wow. What a stunning performance. A 3-0 up against the Philippines. In the beginning of the tournament, so many doubts, so much hate towards this roster. But they proved the world wrong. This is a new lineup for Indonesia. This young blood full of talent, full of hunger. And this, out of all the rosters, is the one to be able to defeat the Philippines.